stage on my screen. It is briefly lit now, and I can guide the robot down to the front of the stage using the controls on my computer. As it moves, you see me on the screen of the robot. This way, I can almost be in two different places at the same time. Human beings have dreamed about this for a long time, to overcome the constraints of our human body. I could have been anywhere in the world, in Moscow or even in Alaska, but I'm very happy to be here tonight to welcome you to Champagne Foundation. Senoras y señores, buenas noches y bienvenidos a Fundación Champagne, our quinto evento de Iniciativa R. My name is Ekaterina, I'm a researcher from Champagne Neuroscience Program. Today, we will explore the state of the art technology of human enhancement. A man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. was first aired in 1973, and it portrays the hope that one day it would indeed be possible to rebuild a man and to extend our lives. Human history is filled with such examples, some, such dreams of enhancement that may have seemed unrealistic in the beginning, but one day they come true, and many of them are now everyday realities. My favorite example is human desire to fly. We always wanted to fly, as illustrated by ancient myth of Icarus. Now, not only do we fly, we also get to choose many different ways of doing so. We don't often think about it, but even clothes can be considered a skin modification technology that provides us better term temperature regulation and protection and allows us to survive in extreme conditions. Our everyday life is full of such examples. To overcome shortness of sight, they have designed eyeglasses, and then to look deeper into reality, Microscopes and telescopes that allow us to see where no human eye could ever see before. Biology and engineering are now taking major steps ahead. As human genome is being deciphered, the list of untreatable diseases shrinks every year. There is the dawn of regenerative medicine and the first bionic prosthesis are being created. And they promise to become even better than human limbs. The man on this video is Oscar Pistorius. He had both, leg, like, both legs amputated below the knees when he was just 11 months of age. But this did not stop him from becoming a professional runner. He won 19 gold medals competing against men with similar disabilities. But this year, he qualified to compete against able men in London Olympics. Oscar is a prime example of how combining cutting-edge technology, bionics, and high spirit, we can come closer to understand the true nature of human potential. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we are doing so, we might also have to question, what does it mean to be a human? Of course, as any of our endeavors, human enhancement is not short of pitfalls. We are excited by the technology, but it also makes us feel uncomfortable. Is it fair for a runner with artificial legs to compete against normal men? Is it safe to pre-select human embryos for their genes? Do we know enough about consequences? How can we stop the race of military technologies that allow soldiers to run longer, to operate without sleep, to control powerful machines? Is human is enhancement good or bad? There is no simple answer. New technologies seem inevitable, but it is how we decide to use them that will determine our fate. Unlike Icarus, given the wings, we should not fly too close to the sun. For us as a society, to make important decisions about human enhancement 
the, the knowledge should be widespread to help us in this quest. We have great speakers for tonight. It is Domingos Henrik, an expert in stem cell research, Neil Harvison, a musician, an artist, and a cyborg, and Miguel Nicolelis, the man who connects brains with machines. We also have a very special guest tonight, whom you might remember from our last R event. Adam Kampf was supposed to, he had to be in Boston today, but I'm very happy to welcome him on the stage to introduce our first speaker. Adam? Hi, Katya. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> nice. It's very exciting and kind of remarkable that I can actually be here tonight. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker. Domingo Sharik is an investigator of stem cell biology and a member of this polymode neuroscience program. His laboratory studies how embryonic stem cells acquire the ability to become any of the numerous different types of cells within an organism. His research focuses on the stem cells that give rise to the diverse types of neurons that make up the brain. Domingos is working to reveal the molecular mechanisms that are responsible for the definition. Ah! <laughs> 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 Can we get Adam back online? No. Okay. So, well, now it is my pleasure to introduce the Henrik, Henrik, who will tell us about stem cell biology and how we can use it for human health. <laughs> 